Hi guys and welcome to Escape We Watch Reviews. My name is Steve and today we're going to be reviewing the Laurier Hyperion Series 2. I purchased this watch with my own money, but it'll be as honest as any other review you've seen from me. I keep it real every time for you guys. And if by the end of this review you want to pick one of these up, I wish you good luck. They go very quickly. I believe this version sold out in about four minutes the last time they dropped. Um, the next drop is in January, so uh, I figured I would put this out there because I really didn't find any good reviews of this thing when I was looking for it. So, um, yeah, you, you just got to be really quick with these things. Sign up for the emails and get ready to purchase and just be quick. The retail price for this watch is $599. US dollars. That's before any sales taxes or coupons or anything like that. I don't believe I paid any sales taxes for this one. Uh, these guys are out of New York State, so maybe that has something to do with it. I'm not really sure. The watch comes in two different colorways. We have the black dial you see here, and then they do have the Skyward Special Edition with a white dial. That one apparently didn't sell out as fast, um, but it was still sold out within a day, I believe. So uh, again, you're going to have to be pretty quick with these ones. The watch case is made of 316L stainless steel. It has an acrylic crystal and an acrylic bezel insert. It has a screw down crown, screw down case back, 100 meters of claimed water resistance. And the watch is powered by the new Miyota 9075 True GMT automatic movement. So, like I said, I was lucky enough to snag one of these things, and now I get to share a full review with you guys. There wasn't really a good kind of in-depth review of this watch when I was looking to buy, uh, you know, $600 is not a cheap watch. Um, so I was a little nervous going into it. I knew that I could probably flip it if I didn't like it um, and not lose any money on it. But, uh, yeah, I actually love this watch. It's been one of my most worn watches since I got it in. So, um, yeah, I'm super happy with the watch. Um, I'm hoping this review will push you one way or the other if you are considering this watch for your next purchase. So I say we get right into this full review. But before we do, as always, doing a quick wrist check today, wearing my Christmas present and um, I guess work anniversary present. Uh, got some cash from that and put it towards this work, this thing. So it's a Damasco DS30. A review for this one will be coming pretty soon, but this is a pretty old watch and um, I think everyone's done a review on this thing. So it's not really a top priority for me, but um, yeah, absolutely love this nice tooly watch. Looks great. And uh, yeah, I've been really liking it. So yeah, let's get into this review. All right, so let's get into the dimensions. We got a bezel diameter of 37.4 millimeters. A case thickness of 12.7 millimeters. We got a 20 millimeter lug width. And a lug to lug of 46.1 millimeters. And sized up for my seven and a half inch wrist with about four links removed. It weighs about 125 grams. So I think the size is really, really nice. It kind of has that vintage size to it, 37 and a half. Uh, it's not quite a, you know, 36, which I feel is too small. Um, I feel like my sweet spot is like 38, 39, so it's just a little bit on the small side for me, but I love the way this thing wears just because of the style of it. Very vintage-like. It's got nice turn down to the lugs there as well. Uh, I'm very happy with the way this watch wears. You can see the bracelet does drape straight down as well, so it's going to fit a lot of wrist sizes, guys. Uh, it's not overly long either. You know, I think it wears beautifully, so I'm going to go outside right now and throw it on my wrist for you. Here we are on my seven and a half inch wrist, and as you can see, uh, I think it wears great. It's it's small enough where it carries that vintage look to it, but it's not too small for me, in my opinion. Uh, absolutely love the way it looks. Lots of taper on the bracelet as well. Uh, it hugs the wrist beautifully. Really nice slim mid case there. Um, yeah, I mean it just looks looks great. I love the light play off of the crystal. It is a acrylic crystal, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. And there's no AR coating on it, but it really doesn't need it at all. You can see the light play off of the bracelet as well. It really is just a nice looking watch combination. So we're in a little bit loose right now just because it's so cold outside. But um, yeah, I think, it, I think it looks really, really good here. And getting out into some direct sunlight, you can really see that gold and the, uh, the blue and the red and the bezel. I think it all looks amazing. I love the colors. They're very subtle and subdued. So it does just sometimes look like a black watch, but... Uh, yeah, the colors are definitely there, and I think it looks fantastic. You can see direct sunlight here, glossy dial, but the uh, acrylic crystal uh, really mitigates a lot of the reflections, and I think it just looks fantastic. All right, I'm going to go throw this on some of my favorite straps that I've found so far, and we'll get back to this review. And here we are on a dark brown leather strap, simple two-stitch strap. This is one that I got off of my Baltany. Uh, I just think the colors of that work really, really nicely together really brings out that red and the gold 
think it looks awesome on a Vario vintage leather strap. I absolutely love the strap gray with the uh, the Pepsi bezel and the gold. It all the color combo just works well for me in my opinion. I think it looks good. What do you guys think of that one? And lastly, here we are on a Cincy Strap Co. This is a SF2 and Army Green or Olive Drab, I forget what they call it, but a great, great nylon strap that I just recently got. Absolutely love them. And I love this color combination, the green with the red and the blue and the gold. Uh, it's a lot of different colors, but I think it all works really, really good together. All right, let's go back inside and let's get back to this review. So getting to the case and the case finishing, this watch is finished wonderfully. Really, really nice vertical brushing on the tops of the lugs here. Flipping it to the crown side, you can see you got a nice horizontal brushing along the case sides here. Drilled lugs, got a nice signed crown, nice and big. Uh, you got a really nice polished chamfer that separates the sides from the top of the lugs there. It runs the full length of the case. It is very nicely done. You can see nice and crisp polishing. Um, yeah, I mean, just the transitions are excellent. Uh, if you guys are familiar with my channel, you'll know that I love these nice sharp transitions. This is right on the level of, uh, you know, San Martin, something that I review quite often. Uh, really nice, crisp transitions. Very happy with that. The bottom of the case is just really nicely smoothed out. It is a super comfortable watch to wear. Uh, I am very, very happy with it. The crown, like I said, it's nice and big. I'll measure that for you real quick. 7, 6.4 millimeters, so really nice size crown, lots of grip on it, nice nice uh, engraving there as well, very happy with that. Flipping it around to the case back here, you can see a nice simple engraving there, it's kind of their Laurier logo just around the outside. You can get this custom engraved for $35, uh, really, other than that though, it's a very simple, very smooth case back, no issues, simple notches for a tool to get in there. Um, I'm happy with that. I, I got no issues with the case back being, you know, for the most part, sterile. The, the case finishing for this watch is excellent. I, ha I can see no issues with it at all. All right, so let's talk about the bezel on this thing. So the bezel itself is stainless steel and fully polished. Plenty of grip on that coin edge there. I think it looks really good. You got a flat insert there, flat bezel insert, and that is an acrylic bezel insert. It is fully loomed as well. You can see it's a very dark, almost maroon red color, and then a dark kind of royal blue. I think it looks fantastic. It's very subtle. It's showing up a lot better here in, in, in the studio lights than it does in everyday life. Um, but I just love, I love Pepsi bezels in general, and I like when they're very subtle colors. So uh, they just nailed this one. I like the font they chose. It does have kind of a greenish tint to it. That is because it is fully loomed, and we'll talk about the loom here in just a little bit. But um, I think it's done very nicely. Nice sharp transition between the colors as well. Um, yeah, I mean, getting up real close, you can see the, the bezel numbers are kind of on, on a secondary layer of this. And that's kind of the cool look with these acrylic bezels. Um, I think they look fantastic. The bezel action on this thing is also very good. Uh, you can see here it is perfectly aligned and then there's no play in this thing at all. Uh, it is a 24 click bi-directional so you get nice solid clicks here. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not but very solid clicks. Um, it just locks right into place and then like I said it is bi-directional so um, yeah, really happy with the bezel action on this thing. I see no issues with it. The bezel itself, really good. Plenty of grip. Um, yeah, it's a great bezel. Covering up this beautiful dial that you see here, we have an acrylic crystal. That's going to put a bunch of people off. Um, you know, I'm kind of in the camp of I really don't care what crystals are on watches too much. Um, like I said, I've been wearing the heck out of this thing for a couple months now, and it has picked up some scratches. Um, the nice thing, you can see some scratches right here, and it definitely picked up a pretty good one right there. Um, but it kind of adds to the character, in my opinion, and they do provide poly watch in the box. So, um, yeah, I've got no real issues with acrylic crystals. They are very unreflective, if that makes sense. Uh, you don't need AR coating on it because just the general nature of acrylic crystals is that they don't really reflect too much light. So, um, yeah, and I think they just look, they look fantastic. Now, I have seen some sapphire crystals that look just as good as this, but uh, I have a feeling that those sapphire crystals would probably cost a little bit more and then you'd have to throw some AR coating on it, which might, might make it not look as good. But, um, yeah, I, you know, for a watch like this, I'm perfectly happy with the acrylic crystal. I know that's going to be a big turnoff for a lot of people, though. 
All right, so let's talk about the dial on this thing. So the dial is done very, very nicely. It is a black lacquer dial. You can see the reflection there of the second scene sweeping around. So really nice and glossy, inky black dial. Really nice printing around the outside there. You have your kind of half railroad track minute track minute track around the outside printed in gilt it does have kind of like a metallic flake to it so it changes depending on the lighting uh, then you have your laurier chevron laurier automatic at 12 o'clock hyperion gmt at the six o'clock really nicely done each hour marker is framed in that gilt printing again everything is done very nicely the the loom plots are placed right in the middle of that printing there I think it looks fantastic. You have a date window here at the six o'clock, again, framed with that gilt printing. I think it looks fantastic. You can see it's got a red 30 there, so the even numbers are red, odd numbers are black, so that's kind of a cool touch there. So Laurier has updated their models to this new hour hand. That was one of the things that was actually holding me back from any other Laurier model. I did not like at all the previous hour hand. This one I love, so I'm really happy that they updated this one. It's got a nice broad arrow hour hand there. And then a simple kind of, I guess, dagger shape for the minute hand. Nice, perfectly sized in my opinion. The second hand there sweeping around, it is nicely loomed as well. All the hands are brushed, which I absolutely love. Sometimes the polished ones, they do look really good, but sometimes they get lost. These ones never get lost. This watch is very legible, and that's one of the things that I absolutely love about it. You do have a very small loom plot there on the GMT hand. The GMT hand there does match this bezel color almost perfectly. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy with the handset on this thing. I'm actually really happy with the loom on this thing too. Like I mentioned earlier, it is a fully loomed bezel insert. The bezel itself and the GMT hand, those are C3 looms. So that's why they kind of have that green tint to them a little bit. And then the dial and the main hands there are BGW9. So I'm going to pop up a loom shot here and you can see it against a couple other watches in the collection. Uh, definitely the GMT function does uh, fade a little bit faster than the rest of the dial, but uh, it's a nice strong application of loom. I'm very happy with the loom on this thing. It lasts all night. I can tell the time with it. And I like the fact that the GMT functions are the same color and then just the normal time functions are the same color. So I'm usually not a fan of bi-tone loom. Uh, I think it works in this in this instance. Right, so let's talk about the movement in this thing. So this movement is a new one, I believe, this year. Uh, it's just starting to really gain popularity. It is the Miyota 9075. So it is a 28,800 beats per hour, so six, so eight ticks of the second hand every second. And it's Miyota reliable, Miyota accurate. Here's how mine has been running. You can see it's been running very nicely. I've got no real complaints with that. The movement, it does hack, it does hand wind. It's about 40 hours of power reserve. It does have a unidirectional winding rotor, so you can hear that rotor kind of spinning along. That's one of my gripes with the movement, um, but it's really not that big of a deal. I haven't noticed it too often, but it is there. Uh, I would definitely prefer it be a bi-directional winding rotor, but uh, it is what it is, right? Um, the real kicker with this watch is that it is a true GMT, a traveler's GMT. It's not a desk GMT. Um, so I'm going to show you that here right now. The first position here is your hand winding. Very nice and smooth as you would expect from a 9000 series Miyota. Uh, the second position, actually I'm going to pull it out to the third position. So third position is where you set your time, as you can see there, hacking um, everything functions as it should, pushing it in, starts up the second hand right away. So to set your time, um, the, the GMT hand is just kind of slaved. Uh, you can't change that independently. So what you have to do is set your GMT hand to whatever time zone you want it to be. And then you pull out to the first position and then you set your main hour hand to whatever position you need it to be in. So that's how it is. That's how it's all set. Um, one of the annoying things about this is, as you can see, usually when you turn the crown one way, it'll change the hour hand. When you turn the crown the other way, it usually changes the date. It does not here. So to change the date on this watch, you got to go around and it, it gets, it gets kind of annoying. If you got to change, you know, five or six days at a time, uh, it's just not a nice experience. You can see it kind of jumps back and forth there. Kind of annoying, but it is what it is. This is, you know, people have been asking for this true traveler GMT for a while now. Um, we got it. 
comes with some nuances, but uh, it's really not a huge deal if you're going to wear this thing a lot or if you have a watch winder or something like that. So uh, just something to keep in mind for you guys. Uh, the nice thing about these ones is that, you know, if you are actually using it to travel, you can easily and quickly jump time zones without having to hack the movement. Um, so yeah, it is nice in that regard, but um, you know, I think for me, I don't do a whole lot of traveling. So uh, the advantages of that kind of outweigh the disadvantages of uh, a, a non-quick set date there. So um, that's just me though, just something to be aware of. Um, it's still something that I'm getting used to every time I pick this watch up and it, and it stopped running. It's something I got to do. So i um, just trying to get used to that. But uh, other than that, very happy with the movement. It's been accurate and it's going to be reliable. No issues with it. Screw in, screw out action of the crown is excellent as well. So um, yeah, overall pretty satisfied with the movement and this thing. If you can get past those little nuances of a true traveler's GMT. All right, so let's talk about the bracelet on this thing. And this is another new one from Laurier. Usually they have kind of a three-link style bracelet. So uh, as you can see here, this is a five-link bracelet. Uh, it does taper from 20 millimeters down to 16 millimeters at the clasp. So really nice taper there. Uh, the tolerances on this thing are excellent. Uh, it does feel a little bit light, but I think it works with this watch. You don't want it to be overly heavy to out, outbalance the, the head of the watch. Uh, it, uh, it feels very nice and balanced on wrist. You can see it is kind of a flat link um, uh, kind of a flat link Jubilee almost. Uh, it looks excellent. It's fully pilot or sorry, it's fully brushed there. You can see female end links. The brushing is done very, very nicely. I've got no issues with that. End link fitment, super solid. And like I mentioned earlier, drilled lugs for easy strap changes. Um, yeah, really happy with it. The, the, the end links follow the case curvature pretty darn nicely. You can see just a little tiny bit there, but that doesn't bother me at all. These end links, they do fall straight down. You got nice, nice solid spring bars in there as well. So, you know, taking the bracelet off, putting it back on, it's a breeze. It's really, really simple. Working our way to the clasp here, you've got your Laurier logo there, nicely engraved. It's a brush top, brushed on the sides, polished chamber, so it matches the case very nicely. Three levels of micro adjust. It's a nice, tiny little clasp here. It's a stamped outer shell, as you can see there. Um, nothing wrong with that. It keeps it nice and slim and low profile. Milled inner parts here, nice tight tolerances. This thing, I mean, it just opens and closes nice and satisfying. I got no issues with it at all. Um, I do wish there would be like an on the fly system, but you can't have everything. Uh, and I really don't mind it too much. It's a fairly light watch, like I said. So um, yeah, it fits fine. Uh, you see you have screw pins for adjusting. You got tons of links to adjust and it came with extra links. So I believe this said this I believe they say this watch will fit up to like an eight and a half inch wrist. Uh, I believe I removed four links for my seven and a half inch wrist. Uh, you can see it's going to fit a lot of small wrists and obviously it's going to fit big wrists. So no issues with the sizing of this thing. Uh, it was buttery smooth. No problems at all. The bracelet itself articulates very nicely. It is super comfortable. This bottom edge is not sharp at all. Um, it's a great bracelet. It does feel, like I said, these five link bracelets, they just don't feel as solid as a three link bracelet, but um, yeah, it, it, it's very comfortable and I think it looks really, really good. Um, yeah, it just feels a little bit light, that's all. So there you go, guys. That is the Laurier Hyperion GMT Series 2. This is the 9075, an original design from a micro brand like Laurier out of New York. Um, $600 is not bad. Um, I think the value with Laurier in general is excellent. I think their design language is strong. Uh, it's not a, you know, I guess there's parts of it that are homaging other brands, but for the most part, it's an original design. I think the case finishing is there. The, the thing people are going to have to get past is that acrylic crystal. I know a lot of people said that they just won't buy it because of the acrylic. Um, you know, that's up to you guys. I, I'm, you know, in, in the boat of each crystal has its advantages. Um, acrylic crystal is probably my second favorite uh, behind a very nicely domed sapphire crystal. So um, the fact that they chose a good acrylic crystal with a nice vintage dome doesn't bother me at all. That's just me, though. 
Um, but yeah, I think the watch in general is excellent. Hopefully this review kind of swayed you guys one way or the other. This is how I wanted to see the watch before I purchased it. I wasn't able to, so uh, I, I did this review for you guys that are interested in this watch. And like I mentioned, they're going to have a new batch of these things in January, I believe. So that's the plan. Sign up on their site to get notified. They notify you right away. Go there, buy it, um, and you'll be pretty happy with it, I think. So um, I know I am, like I said, I have been wearing the heck out of this thing for the last couple months. Uh, it's great. It's fantastic. Every time I put it on, I love it. So um, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.